I've just discovered another step in the evolution of LED lamps, and it's not a good one. This is a down-costing of the Maxim LED lamps, and I just bought this one and opened it, and the first thing I noticed was the fact that the silicone glue that they used to actually attach the front was completely covering one of the LEDs. And the circuitry is fairly typical for these, but what's interesting is that this a rectangular hole here normally has a little uh, insert in it that they can plug the capacitor into and it provides two things it provides electrical insulation where it goes through the aluminium core circuit board and it also provides a bit of thermal insulation so that the capacitor can be mounted without direct connection to the aluminium heat sink and likewise they don't seem to they've got the similar arrangement normally in lamps like this for the mains incoming supply wires from the back of the lamp cap. But in this case, they've actually just got a cutout on the edge of the circuit board with the wires folded over. And here's the thing. This is an aluminium core PCB, and it has an ultra-fine shim of fiberglass, this sort of white layer here, um, just to provide electrical separation from the f between the LEDs and the heatsink. But in this case, because they've got the capacitor leads just folded across, there is a possibility, particularly say here, that they're actually in very close vicinity to the aluminium backplane. And likewise, where these wires are folded round, there's no guarantee they're not going to touch that aluminium. So I wonder how many of these lamps are actually going to go bang when turned on because they've just cut the insulation so fine that there's virtually nothing there, that they're on the edge of just touching that aluminium. It's not very impressive. But tell you what, let's reverse this LED lamp anyway. One moment, please. And resume, and there are no great surprises. There's a 10 ohm fusible resistor tucked in down here in the base. That uh, limits inrush current, but it also acts like a fuse if something goes wrong. Like, say, for instance, the wires touch the aluminium circuit board. We've got a bridge rectifier, that's uh, this bit here. Uh, we've got a 1 meg ohm load resistor. The reason for that, it's uh, got two purposes. It provides a slight load to avoid ghost glowing of the LEDs through capacitive coupling between switch wires. Very common in two-way switching. And then it's got the 3.3 meg fired 400 volt capacitor here. And that resistor also makes sure that when the light's turned off, it goes out instantly instead of just fading away, as would happen if you remove this resistor. Quite a nice effect, I have to say. Quite useful. But does leave a bit of a charge on the uh, capacitor. Then we've got a matrix of seven LEDs. I reckon that each LED probably contains 15 chips. They really have cut down the number of LEDs here by using multi-chip LEDs. And then we've got an FM3081 style linear current regulator where you set the current through it by a 39 ohm resistor. Well, in this case, a 39 ohm resistor. Normally they have... Uh, a couple of resistors in parallel, which is nice because it makes it easier to hack. You can just chop one of them off because they're in parallel and it reduces the current. But in this case, you'd actually have to change this resistor here completely to change the rating of the lamp um, to lower it. Or if you wanted to, you could theoretically increase it, but the LEDs are already pushed to the very hilt. Um, but that is it. They've really skimped in so many ways. And apparently the quality of manufacture control has also been skimped. This is uh, the lowest of the low. But it's interesting. Interesting how things like this sort of evolve over time. We've seen them go from quite complex lamps. We've seen them... Oh, let's not go out too far. That's just showing everything on the bench. Uh, we've seen them going from quite complex lamps to the very simplified lamps. And now all we're seeing now is cost-cutting to make sure that these lamps don't last too long uh, and they're just the cheapest, nastiest, disposable things for manufacture, uh, short life, and then discarding. That is apparently the future of LED lighting. But it's uh, still interesting to explore. It's quite fun watching it evolve.